loose in the world of the paranormal? Bigfoot? UFO? Cryptozoology? Just for the sake of it. Just to see if you're interested. If not, if you've watched it for one minute, if I get one viewer, it doesn't matter. It's for my bit of fun. I just want to like these subjects and I thought, why not do a sort of little online show for YouTube or whatever for it. And that is that. Thank you very much. And here are the following reports. I hope you enjoy them. Bye. Well, not um, Bigfoot. It's Bad Scratch of the Mount St. Helens. Which is a bit of a legend. You never heard of it? Following the supersized footsteps of Bigfoot, another legendary creature supposedly hangs out in the northwest is getting TV treatment in Bat Squatch of Mount St. Helens, an episode of season three Fox Nation streaming series, Monsters Across America. Host Case Crazy McDowell visits Washington State to fly in a huff, uh, huff helicopter over Mount St. Helens, talk to retired reporter and mother Pope. Reported witnesses run through various theories of just what the, the bat squatch might be. Not familiar with bat squatch, the episode with formerly what it is. It's a huge flying cross between a bat and a squatch. Squat. Did the beast system emerge from the earth following the 1988 eruption of Mount St. Helens? Is it missing link, an alien or synthetic, synthetic creature? As those theories indicate, the existence of the bat squatch sounds more like the plot line for the X-Files, episode in a phenomenon studied in scientific journals. In the episode, Medell talks about how the bat squatch legend gained momentum. It goes back to the Washington teenager called Brian Canfield in his 1994 account of driving his pickup and you have a vehicle suddenly stop for the appearance of a creature that, according to Canfield, the tail had blue fur, yellow eyes and wings. The beast stared at the canfield, then ascended and dis- disappeared. The pickup started up again. The now-retired reporter from Tullamore T- T- Tombone reported Can- 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 Canfield back in the late 90s and wrote about the young man supported close account of the bat squatch. As reported tells MacDale, Canfield seemed to believe that what he saw was real. Dale says he she tried to interview Canfield, but his story but his city referred to the Mountain Monsters Across America team to, to his mother, Chandra Canfield. She tells MacDonald her son, who's now moved away from the area, doesn't like to talk about the bat squatch incident. After in, sightings have been reported in, in, in including by hikers, Mount Sets, so Haska in 2009 plot, whose calf may have been buzzed by a squatch in the area near Mount Rainer, Medell runs through the various theories and bats about bat squatch, including one that suggests the beast may be an example diabolical flying apes left loose on the pit of the earth by the eruption of Mount St. Helens, a possibility is discussed by an interview subject who wrote a book titled World Tops. Top secret of uh, what earth is hollow. Bat Squatch of St. Man Helens this episode is second of three Monsters Across America. As is begin streaming the late, late from the, the nation for it. Fox Nation Wednesday, August 18th. The other two are Lake Frono Monster, which Mendel describes Tenia Tessie and the estimate night caller, but it's still being sighting as a mate National Park. No, so there's a beer called Bat Squatch. Well, there you are. And that is that. Well, to the news of Bigfoot hunting. Bigfoot reviews. Seattle based filmmaker follows the man assessed with finding Sasquatch. But well, this is a review. I let you read it for yourself because I haven't seen the film. So it's not for me to read it. And 
here's a bit of the trailer. Hunting Bigfoot. The guys that 2021. The lost. You went from this gentle giant to being this man that was unpredictable. Would talk about stuff that would blow your mind. What I saw is what I saw. It's real. I looked at it. I looked in his eyes. They will start to disregard careers, their marriages, their hobbies. Their lives can spiral out of control. We're articulate, intelligent, educated people, even if we are way up here in the Northwest. Here's where I had my sighting. Um, about 60 miles to the east of there is where Craig had his sighting. You have this experience, and then you want to try to prove what you saw, and you want to try to understand it, and you can't. I show my mom the picture, and she called my dad. She said, your son just took a picture of something in the water. I think they were created by God. Keep those knees back, please. Everybody says I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I know it's there. I'm going to find it. Population biologists have often said there's probably somewhere between 500 and 5,000 animals. It's some kind of a scat. It was unique in its transfer RNA and unlike anything that we've identified to this point. I think one of the things that I respect most about John is that he won't give up on it. And it doesn't seem to matter if he gets tangible evidence. It doesn't seem to matter if other people believe him. He just never gives up. But I think obsession has a kind of a pathological edge to it, where you lose contact with the rest of life. How do you think this happened? Huh? The legend of the primate in this part of the world, it's something that's never going to die. It's important for cryptozoology. Bats bubble much like human infants. And here is the video. That song is so different from human speech that it barely scrapes the limits of our hearing. But babies and fat pups have a lot in common when it comes to their early chattering. New research has revealed vocalizing behaviors that both these mammals share in infancy. It's a first-of-its-kind comparison, the scientists say, that defines baby bat babbling. Babies make distinct sounds and often repeat them ad nauseum. They're part of babbling, a crucial rung on the ladder to spoken language. Greater sack-wing bats don't speak, but their buzzes appeal to potential mates. Their pups get started early. Past studies show they rattle off sounds resembling adult territorial songs, which help males court mates and defend their turf. That makes them among a few mammals, like marmosets, whose offspring utter sounds similar to babbling in babies. Researchers thought these bat pup chirps might share some features with human babbling, but no one knew for sure. First, the researchers had to pin down what the sound shared with those made by human infants. They defined eight elements of babbling based on studies in humans. These included how old babies are when they start babbling, what sounds and syllables babies use, and why they use these sounds, even when they seem to have no clear purpose. The researchers observed bat colonies on buildings and trees in Central America, and recorded their vocalizations in different contexts. They might note when a pup made its first chirps. Another pup might repeat the same vocal pattern over and over, with no response from its parent, as babies sometimes do. Next came the arduous task of classifying the vocal patterns of bat pups. Since baby gurgles and coos are familiar and audible to us, the different sounds they make are easier to tell apart. But many bat sounds fall outside the range of normal human hearing and are nothing like the language we're used to. So bat vocal patterns must be identified visually by hunting for signature shapes in their sound waves. Scientists logged thousands of sounds from 200 plus babbling bouts and sorted them into syllables. That required manually matching the visual shapes of sound waves to 25 types of adult bat syllables. 
Eventually, they assembled a library of bat calls that resembled human babbling. Like babies, the bat pups produced long strings of sounds made of the basic structures of adult sounds. They also had their own rhythms, just like baby babbles have distinct cadences. And the features of these sounds were found in every bat colony, the way that all babies babble, regardless of language or culture. In the future, the researchers hope to learn more about why little bats chatter in the first place. The same group has begun studying genes that in humans relate to language. If similar genes are active in bat brains during both babbling and language acquisition, it could mean that these early bat vocalizations are simply the warm-up sessions for fully developed bat songs, the way baby babbling is a precursor to human speech. Bats may be echoing the evolution of human communication, even if it's just out of earshot. Several earlier here, rare 90 foot blue whales spotted in Murray Bay, humpbacks are jumping too. A rare spectacle last week a spoke to see sightseers in Murray Bay, spotting 90 foot blue whales as well as large pod of 90. 90- 40 foot humpbacks, just a short boat ride from Monterey Harbour. Most people have never seen a blue whale, said Nancy Black, rebiologist and owner of Monterey Bay Whale Watch. Past years, we, you had to be lucky. Blue whales are not very predictable. But right now, they are here. We know why. Past 10 years, more how huge masses of krill and a small shrimp like crustacean. The favourite food of blue whales ride on the edge of Mulberry Submarine Canyon and deep underground formation that stems from the moss landing. We brought in 10 to 12 blue whales to gorge and Sunday decided to cut a pair of blue whale calves, estimated at 35 to 40 feet long, same time mammoth schools of anchovies along the southern edge of the canyon treaded roughly 40 humpback whales mostly ranging 40 to 45 feet long, known for spectacular jumps, pirouettes and lunge feeding. Her humpbacks as often work as a team, them in circles and blowing bubbles to create an underwater curtain to corral the bait fish. The whales will take turns diving and sludging, sludging up under, through the prey. That's a picture of the blue whale, spotted in Mowbray Bay. The ocean currents push along the wall and canyon, so there's lots of pelt for a bit willing. Black said it makes for lots of plankton. A plankton then draws the creel, anchovies, squid, and other bait fish, which in turn draw the whales. Blue whales are twice as long as a city bus and recognised as the largest a- animals ever lived on the planet. They can live 90 years and reach 110 feet. Seeing blues and humpbacks on the same trip within close range of shore is a key reason why Monterey is considered number one whales watching sight off the Pacific coast while blue whales are humpbacks are stars of the show whale watching trips out of Monterey the past week have also cited a nursery of 30 visual dolphins, $10 pul- delays, porpoises minke and fin whales and four killer whales Unlike San Francisco and most harbours, the California coast, well sighting in Monterey Bay, doesn't quite expensive all-day trips. Within half a day ride out of Monterey, the ocean floor drops off a shelf a hundred feet, to the canyon floor at 5,000 feet. This allows Black to run three to four hour trips and part m- multiple times a day around usually 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Trips start at $60 per person, which gets terms for kids at three-hour after, afternoon trips. For more ambitious watches, long trips are available. Last Sunday, it took only 30 million minutes to reach the Blue Wells. Under Moray, they're pretty close out, close to shores, Black said. Humpbacks located the east along the southern count edge of the canyon were easy to locate. The distance of spouts looked like puffins, puffs of smoke rising from the sea surface. When closer, you can often see their flukes. They rise. Their tails high from above the surface to keep propelled a plow dive. 
oftentimes can be spot them rocketing to air, spinning and landing on their backs with tremendous splashes. Another picture. Most captains of the preacher the whales will put their vessels in neutral, float free. The whales often choose to swim right up and put on a show. Three boats don't run daily out of Monterey, a 60 foot black fin, 70 foot whale took free, and 50 foot point de sur, sur clipper. Because of the social distancing guidelines, trips are limited to 60, 35, and 24 people, respectively, about half capacity. The best chance to see blue whales, the best boat is a black fin where you can pay a bit more. Another ten dollars for upper deck seating. From a highest perspective, you can best see the outline of this rare animal. Unlike humpbacks, they never, almost never beach, but never rather cruise forward, occasionally getting loose with with their mighty blowholes on the surface, using their giant mouths for shrill, light trap as they swim for the schools of tiny krill. Paranormal, again. Just take this bit off, that bit. And this is security camera footage captures mischief in Soho pub. This is the film again. Suki Cambridge footage of what I believe to be the Red Lion Podergeist in action. And that was it. Thank you. Story number one from the world of paranormal. Lizzie Borden's house is hiring a professional ghost hunter. Apply now if you dare. Forward in a river, looking for part-time work and aren't afraid to. Of no ghosts, a Lizzie Borden house is looking for somebody, for someone to join their hunt, ghost hunting team. U.S. Ghost Adventures, new owners of the Museum Bed and Breakfast at 232nd Street, recently advertised on opening a job site. Indeed.com, looking for a part-time paranormal investigator and ghost hunter. Job involves leading ghost hunting tours at the home where Andrew and Abby, Abby Bolden was found brutally murdered on August 4th, 1892, a key tourist attraction in Fall River for years for Lizzie Law. This is Le- Burden's legend. His wife, Fall River's most famous true crime story, will never die. Work for Lizzie? Check out the Liz- Lizzie Burden house job application at Indeed. This is a macar- shot of macabre Lizzie Burden sit- doll. Sits on the shelf, holding open a book. Initial the words L.A.B., which Lizzie herself cried at the scene. Candidates must have an experience in paranormal investigation as well as proficient knowledge of ghost hunting equipment. The ad reads, swiftly that their applicant should have one to three years experience in paranormal investigation required. Equipment used in ghost hunting typically includes audio recorders, cameras, tools for sensitive changes in the at temperatures, and electromagnetic field meters. People who believe in ghosts often claim their spirits c- can cause Drops in the air, nate temperature, in effect, electromagnetic magnetic fields. That's a picture of the Lizzie Burden's house at Fall River. Liz, Liz, Lizzie Burden in pop culture. Eleven ways movies, TVs make more look, they could look back, whacker and legend. Besides familiarity with the supernatural stuff, you had suggest the ideal candidate should have experience. Giving guided tours and improvisational public speaking, and excellent con- controversial conservational skills, a knack for storytelling. There are gig plays, well, it may have played, because it may have gone now. 
15 to 25 pound per dollars per hour of tips or hunting for the ghosts working nights of course non-negotiable study lizzie law where to start learning about me murder, murder story from the books and films that's a bumper sticker postcards for sale at lizzie Bolton house on second street in Fall river since buying a bb uh, earlier this year us ghost ventures has offered 35 dollar ghost tours at second street home every evening from 10 p.m to midnight Prowler visitors prowl the door house's first floor and basement looking for ghosts in the dark. Throughout the years, the B&B has featured on multiple ghost hunting TV shows, including TLO's Kim Destroyer. Many visitors have reported non-spiritual supernatural events, tales of the legends of the house being home to that ghost, a boom, boom, a maid, Bridget, neighbor, child, and drowned by the insane mother, and even a deadless cat. And all this can be found on the Herald, eu.heraldnews.com. For watching episode one of Things from the World of Cryptology, Paranormal, and anything else that I find interesting. Just my little bit of snippets. You might not want to watch it. I know it's familiar to other shows, but this is just my version. You don't have to listen to me droning on and on and on. But please subscribe like and share my product and as they say in good old England, tutty ta tutty ta